Welcome to Canfi Planet, I'm Mac, this is Tetsu, and today I'm exploring one of the most exciting names in new Japanese craft whiskey, Maoi. Maoi is both a winery and distillery, perched high on 13 hectares with panoramic views to the west over Hokkaido's Ishikari Plains. This is an incredible location, Hokkaido is a very beautiful prefecture, and this is one of the most beautiful spots in the northernmost point in Japan. Stunning. Maoi is an indigenous Ainu word, meaning place where the hamanasu bears fruit. From its humble beginnings in 2006, producing wine made from Hokkaido's native mountain grapes, Maoi has expanded to distilling brandies before making the leap to whiskey in 2022. Now, they're making a name for themselves on the craft whiskey scene, and it seems they have a very interesting ace or two up their sleeve. CEO Tetsu Murata shares all about Maoi's eclectic offerings and takes me on a fascinating journey from ingredients to equipment to aging, including a sneak peek in a very weird, very dark, and I gotta say, pretty fantastic place. Let's find out. Even the CEO is yeah, cleaning of away. Of course, of course. What an absolute honor it is to be sat next to Tetsu Murata, the CEO of the Maui Distillery. Thank you for joining us on Kampai Planet. Oh, thank you very much for coming. How did you come to be the CEO of this distillery? Long story short, I was a sake person um, two years ago, so we merged with a, a, this winery, and last December I became the CEO. Tell us a bit about the setup here mm -hmm. in terms of your equipment. We are a very small setup, uh, 200 kilogram um, per batch. So our so mash tons and our wash bags are a thousand liter as well as the pot stills. So I think we are about a, a quarter size of the uh, average Japanese craft distillery. So probably one of the smallest distillery uh, existing in Japan. Almost like 90% of our production, we're actually making our new makes from barley's from Hokkaido. It does have a very, very strong taste of malts. It does have a relatively sweet and like a smooth taste. We do produce a small amount of whiskeys uh, made from the Scottish laureates, but it is very small. I'm actually here today at Maoi on a day that distillation is taking place. The smell is absolutely fantastic. Tell us a bit about the bottles here in front of us. Okay, so this side is our malt whiskey side. Uh, so this is a new make whiskey made from the Scottish laureates. This is a newborn whiskey which was aged in, in uh, bourbon barrels for three months. This is a new make whiskey made from the local barley, uh, the barley's from Hokkaido. Uh, this is a uh, new make whiskey which was aged in a sherry cask for four months. This is our brandy made from the Chardonnay wines, and this is our grain whiskey. So, malt whiskeys, brandies, grain whiskeys. So, this is our whole setup. What a fantastic lineup! I've been very lucky to try all of them, and they are stunning and they bode so well for the future whiskey that, that is going to be produced from aging them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, we're looking forward to it as well, yeah. Are you planning to release anything more on the journey to three years? So we are um, planning to release our local barley peated new make whiskeys. After that, we probably will not be selling any newborns or new, new make whiskeys. I think our whiskeys well, we will need to wait a little bit more than three years, uh, given the strongness of our new make whiskeys as well as the environment. So, not three years. That is a very good point, actually. We've got used to distilleries down in Kagoshima mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or in Shizuoka yeah. releasing things, mm -hmm. possibly with a date of three years yeah. and one day, mm -hmm. but they're in a very different climate to Hokkaido. Yeah. Kyushu, it's very warm, very humid. It does have a very dry winter as well. Here in Hokkaido, we are very cold. Uh, we have a very humid winter. The aging environment is very, very different. So our whiskeys, we definitely will need to wait for at least four or five years. Yeah. What are the most interesting cast types that you've got sitting in your cellar? Anything wild, 
obviously you're mm -hmm. gonna have some X wine. Mm, yeah, so we will definitely have our X wine um, casks. So we actually make apple brandies as well as a wine brandy. So those will become brandy casks or uh, Calvados casks. We'll also have our ram casks. And we also have own a beer company and that beer company produces IPA. So we can also have our IPA cask as well. So whole variety of casks. Any ex gin casks there as well? Juniper? Ooh, I don't know. That would be an experiment. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't say no, but I don't know. <laughs> Run it, run it. Yeah. Get more experiments to run. Yeah, that's and true. We'll see how it comes out. I'm yeah. happy to uh, let you know. Okay, if sure. It works out. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Anything interesting from other parts of Japan? Ex sake, ex awamori, anything? Uh... Yeah, so we also own a sake company. So at some point, we might be um, using sake casks. Don't know. <laughs> We've seen that from some distilleries in Japan. Yes. I mean, yeah. Akashi, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ekashima, White Oak. Mm -hmm. uh, those guys have been producing a number of uh, mm -hmm. ex sake casks. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really a big fan of sake cask at this moment. There are other er areas of focus that we need to work on as well. So, if you have any like suggestions, we'll use any cask by your suggestions. So, fantastic. Yeah. You know, I absolutely love Nihonshu. Mm -hmm. So, I'm looking forward to you bringing some of your Nihonshu expertise okay, sure. for the whiskey making. Yes, yes, yes. So we are, we probably are going to be using some of the yeast using uh, the sake yeast. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I actually truly believe that kind of yeast is a uh, distiller mm -hmm. secret weapon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'd love to see more innovation mm -hmm. in yeast exactly. uh, mm -hmm. in Japanese whiskey. So we probably will be start using sake yeast number 901 um, fairly soon. After using 901, probably 1401, 701, go on, go on, so on, so on, so on, so on, yeah. 01, non-foaming yeast. You, you got it, wow. It's the sake expert. Yeah, we'll... <laughs> <laughs>I understand that you're aging your whiskies in a fallout shelter that was built by the previous owner of the winery. Exactly, yes. So the previous owner thought that there will be a huge nuclear war. So he built out a huge shelter which holds up to like 500 barrels. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> How yeah. long do you think it's going to take you to fill those 500 barrels. Mm -hmm. We're producing 240 barrels per year, so we probably will need to expand and build another aging um, cellar, perhaps next year or, or the year after. Speaking of aging, yeah, it's come to my attention that you're mm -hmm. running a very interesting Angel Share Zero experiment. Mm -hmm. Tell me about. I wouldn't say zero, but it's almost close to zero. Wow, that is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe that moisture and mm -hmm. the humidity mm -hmm. is kind of replenishing the barrel. It, exactly. As the yeah. evaporation is it, taking place. Exactly, so the fallout shelter, the temperature is stable of the, throughout the year. So it's like 15 degrees uh, Celsius in summertime five to 10 degrees in Celsius in the winter, and it's very humid throughout the year, so the aging process is very, very slow, but that at the same time, the angel share is sm very small as well. Wow, so what you're telling me is this is a very well-built fallout shelter, truly protection from the elements. Yeah, but that wasn't our initial intention. So it, it just happened to be like that, so. Well, that's great because, you know, we talk <laughs> yeah. about terroir yeah. as reflecting, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, the barley, things like that. But you have this very strange man-made terroir. Yeah, right. Fallout shelter, right. which is going to be a part of the Maui distillery character. Yeah, I think forward. so. Yeah, I think so as well. But here in Maui, the aging process is very slow. So our cash <laughs> process will be, you know, very small. Hopefully that results in a higher quality that's true of liquid that is true and mm -hmm. the market recognizes that yeah, yeah. rather than yeah. what we have seen with some mm. distilleries in yeah. japan which is a pursuit of quantity yeah exactly yeah so we actually abandoned the idea of pursuit of qu quantity as well as the pursuit of the cash itself but we're almost only from pursuing quality 
having the, a, a long age whiskey. So we'll see how it goes. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So this is our entire distillation system. So this is a spill side. This is the column side. So we use the spill side to make malt whiskeys and we use the column side to make grain whiskeys as well as brandies. So it's a hybrid system made by Foresight. But downstairs, we actually make the, the warts or the washings. So we are a 200 kilogram batch and when the bottle is in here, uh, the malt will come all the way up and come into the, the mash tuns and this keeps in hot water so about like 70 degrees Celsius or something like that. You put in the hot water and the malt in here and start the saturation process inside the mash tuns. Once, once the saturation process is done, we put in the at least into the wash packs and have the fermentation process start. So we usually use like four days of fermentation process. But then the, three, the first three days will be the days to reduce alcohol and the last day is to produce lactic acid. So this is our first aging room. So we put in the very new barrels initially in this room and before we move it into the fallout shelter. Here is an end malt, which means that the malts are coming from Nakashibetsu, which means it's the local barrels from Hokkaido, and we filled it at 63.6%. So, and this is a, a, I believe this is a burn, 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 burn Given that Hokkaido is very cold, our largest barrel will be either the 225 um, hogs hand or the, the burn barrels here. So we cannot use the larger barrels or the, uh, like the 400 or 500 liter barrels because of the aging process is very slow here in Hokkaido. We mainly use the quarter casks, which is around the 100 liter to 125 liters of um, bourbon casks or the sherry casks or these 40 liter octaves. In, in order to actually quicken the aging process. This is the malt coming from um, Scotland, so the UK uh, laureates. Um, this, these are the malts coming from Nakashibetsu, which are the local barley. These are the local barley. And compare this with the ones coming from Scotland. What's the difference? So the malts coming from Scotland is much more sweeter, so it has more starch in it. So this one has less starch, uh, more taste of the gra grain, so it's less sweet. Ah, uh, interesting. Yeah. These are the malts coming from Scotland. So this size the wine size, so the wine fermentation tanks, is about like a, a 2,000 liter size. Um, so we squeeze the grape juice from here, put it into the tanks, and have it fermented for about a month or so. And these are the barrels which we use to age wine. So these are French oak barrels. You probably will use these like three or four times, and then once it's retired, we will use it to age whiskeys in these barrels. So welcome to our fallout shelter. So this, this is the first door. This is the second door. And this is the third door. So there are three doors up here. <laughs> Coming in here, you cannot see anything. So you need some lights here. So these are the unused barrels, unused bourbon barrels. And yeah, we are. Ooh. So these are the, the barrels filled. So how many barrels have you filled so far? Around uh, 60 barrels now. Yeah, 60-ish barrels. So these barrels, without the numbers, contains brandies. So other barrels which has numbers on it, they contain whiskeys. So 
Oh, so these are new barrels. The barrel was filled in August 12, 2023, uh, which contains uh, new makes made out of Nakashibetsu molds and was filled at 63.4% ABV. Tetsu, it's a real experience to be in this amazing fallout shelter come aging warehouse. Yeah. So not, so I don't think a lot of people want, really wants to come here and come in here. So just to be 100% honest with you, you are the very first cask owner to come into this fallout shelter. The very first one. Oh my goodness. What an honor. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic experience. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know what to say. A little glimpse of the world, hopefully not ravaged by nuclear war, when we emerge. This place has a very beautiful scenery. Our like a visitor center is very nice and new. So I would love everyone to come over to Maui. As the sun sets on a beautiful day on the Ishikari Plain, there are exciting times ahead for Maui and Japanese craft whiskey. Until next time, kanpai.